Ready to play some cool game hacks like Super Mario World, The Lost Levels? Mike Tyson's Punch-Out! Remix with new character moves and colors? How about NBA Jam 2K21 Tournament Edition with superstars like LeBron, Kobe, CP3, and is that Michael Jordan? Yup. I'll teach you how to hack your ROM so that you can play your games your way. Let's tip this video off together and get started. In order to hack your ROM files, you're going to need what's called a patch file. There are tons of these available at romhacking.net, linked for you in the description. Let's search for hacks by game title. In this case, I'd like to find some hacks for Super Mario World for the Super NES. Click the search box for search by title and then type in the name of the game that you're interested in finding hacks for. Once you have the title typed in, press the enter key on your keyboard and you'll be taken to the list of search results. Now, what to pick for this first ROM hack? How about this one? Super Mario World The Lost Levels Episode 1. Once you've found the hack that you want to access, click on the link to access its page. On that ROM hack information page, you're going to get a lot of great information about what the ROM hack does and how to access it. And there are two key pieces of information on the page you can't afford to overlook. The first one is to know exactly which ROM you need in order to make this hack work. If you'll look at the top of the ROM ISO information section, you'll find the exact ROM name that you need to find in order for this hack to work. Once you've identified the ROM that you need, come down to the link section and click download. Each time you sign on to this page for the first time and click download, you'll be given what's called a human challenge code. This is just making sure that it's not a bot downloading content from their site. Enter in the alphanumeric code exactly as you see it on screen. Once you have this code entered, if you are, in fact, a human, click on the box that says, I am human. If you're a robot, well, this process won't work for you. I've staged the correct ROM for this process, along with the downloaded hack file, in the downloads folder. Extract the contents of the downloaded hack file into your downloads folder or the location of your choice. Then you can delete that zip file in order to eliminate clutter. With a small ROM size like Super Mario World and a small hack size like this one, you can literally just drag and drop the ROM file directly into the newly created hack folder. With the ROM file situated in place, go ahead and double click into the folder. If it's your first time patching a ROM, I'd recommend reading the readme files that are often included inside the hacking package that you've downloaded. That readme file will often have key information about which ROM file you'll need and oftentimes which emulator you'll need in order to run its patched version. In the days of not so long ago, you often had to use a number of different downloaded offline resources in order to patch ROMs. Now you can use this website, link for you in the description below. To patch your game, from the section at the top that says ROM file, click choose file. Navigate to the location where you have the ROM file and the ROM patch. In this case, it's going to be the downloads folder. Select the ROM file from the list of choices. Now come down to patch file and select choose file. Then choose the patch file. In this case, it's the file with the .ips extension. Once you've picked the ROM file and the patch file, look for any error messages that appear right here. If you see nothing, everything should be good to go. If you see an error message, you probably have an incompatible ROM file. To get your patched ROM file, click Apply Patch. The website will patch the file for you and automatically download it to your computer. Let's load this newly patched ROM into RetroArch and see if it works. I'll grab the current version of SNES 9X to try running this ROM. And in the Downloads folder, here's the patched copy of Super Mario World. I'll run the game with the currently selected core, and sure enough, everything works great. And you know what my favorite thing about this hack is? The N64 music and graphics from Super Mario 64. Amazing! But Blaine, you say, I know this works for cartridge-based ROM games, but what about disc-based games like the PlayStation 1? Well, here's how it's done. Back on the romhacking.net website, let's see if we can find a hack for a PlayStation 1 game. In this case, let's look for NBA Jam Tournament Edition. One of the problems with searching by title alone is you'll get every title for every platform that's available in their search engine. And with a popular title like NBA Jam, that can be a lot of entries to sort through. To narrow your search results, scroll back up to the top of the page. You'll find a dropdown under the word platform. In the dropdown, you'll find a list of consoles you can use to whittle down your search. In this case, I'll select the dropdown for the original PlayStation. To update the search results, go back to the text box where you typed in the title and press enter again. The search results will refresh below. See how this narrowed the scope of the search results to only NBA Jam for PlayStation? Right on. 
And the hack I'm looking for is called NBA Jam 21. Once you find the one you're looking for, click on it. For this game and this hack to work together, you're going to need NBA Jam Tournament Edition in BinQ format. And make note that this patch has to be applied specifically to the file called track1.bin. Once you've verified what you need to do to patch the game, scroll down to the link section and once again click on download to grab the patch file. Just like with Super Mario World, I've already pre-staged the game files for NBA Jam in the downloads folder. You'll need to uncompress the zip file you downloaded from romhacking.net. Once you have this file uncompressed, you can delete the zip file to eliminate clutter out of your downloads folder once again. Unlike a single ROM file like Super Mario World, I wouldn't mix these two folders worth of files together. There are a number of different files and folders within each of these and it can really start to become confusing if you blend them together. Back at the ROM Patcher website, under ROM File, select Choose File. Remember how the romhacking.net website said that you had to apply the patch to track1.bin? To get to that file, go to the folder that has the binq files for the game you intend to modify. See how the first file here ends with the listing track1.bin? That's the one you want to select. Come down to Patch File and select Choose File. You'll probably still be in the folder that contains your game files. Navigate back to your Downloads folder and into the folder that contains the patch files you want to use. Do you see how this patch file has a .ppf extension instead of a .ips extension? Don't let that throw you. It's just a different patch file extension for a different platform. Once you've located the patch file in the navigation section, double click to load it. Like you did with the Super Mario World ROM patch, look for any error messages. If there aren't any, click Apply Patch to download the patched file for track1.bin. Neither a real PlayStation 1 nor a PlayStation 1 emulator are going to be looking for a file with the word patched in parentheses in it. Let's fix that. Once you have the word patch deleted from the file name, copy the file. Don't move it anywhere, just copy it in place. Now go to the folder where you have your game files and double click into it. You see, this is why we didn't drag and drop the track1.bin file from the downloads folder into your game files folder. And if you didn't have it backed up, you would have been out of luck. The easiest way to be able to maintain the integrity of the original files you have is just to rename the track1.bin file to something else. In this case, I'm just going to put OEM in it as a reminder to me that it was the original file for the game. Now that the original track1.bin file is backed up, you can paste in the patched file here. Back in RetroArch, I'm going to load up a PlayStation Core and test this out. In this case, the Beetle Core. Then navigating over to Load Content, the folder for NBA Jam Tournament Edition, down to the Q sheet and click it. Then choosing the Beetle Core to launch the game. And everything works great. Time to bring out the superstars of yesterday and today for a jam session. For more great gaming content, check out this video shown on screen and linked in the pinned comment and description below. I'll look forward to seeing you over there.